Hi everyone, I am Neil Trevitt and I work on developer ecosystems at NVIDIA and I am president of the Kronos Group. I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak to you today about the Kronos Group and some of the standards that we are creating for portable, augmented and virtual reality. In particular, the OpenXR standard, which will play a key role in enabling the use of 5G in cloud XR systems. Let me start by quickly introducing Kronos if you haven't come across the group before. We are an open standards consortium providing a safe space for the industry to cooperate to create interoperability standards to enable applications to access the power of silicon acceleration in domains such as 3D graphics, virtual and augmented reality, and parallel computation. We are a non-profit and all the standards we create are open and royalty free for the industry to use. We have been working on standards for 20 years and have almost 160 members, everyone from the largest companies down to small startups spread around the world, including many companies in China, including Huawei, Alibaba and others. We are open to any company who wishes to join to have a voice and a vote in how Kronos standards evolve. Here are some of the Kronos open standards that are most relevant to augmented and virtual reality. On the right are 3D rendering APIs, including Vulkan, OpenGL and WebGL. On the top are 3D asset formats, including GLTF for real-time transmission of 3D scenes and object models, which is often used in AR and VR applications. On the left are APIs and languages for parallel computation, including vision processing and inferencing. And last but not least is the OpenXR API standard for portable access to augmented and virtual reality devices. OpenXR is the main topic of my talk today. At Kronos, we mean XR to include both AR and VR. OpenXR defines a common API that all XR runtimes can expose to application and engine developers. This enables XR software to be written once and run on any XR hardware that supports the OpenXR API. For the first time, XR applications don't have to be rewritten to run on each runtime in the industry. It's important to understand that OpenXR does not prevent device vendors to continue to innovate in the design and implementation of their hardware and runtimes. But the industry has now agreed how to consistently expose the capabilities of the XR devices and runtimes to the software developers to avoid industry fragmentation. OpenXR is supported by almost all the leading companies involved in building AR and VR systems throughout the industry. It's interesting that as well as providing portability, OpenXR has enabled the industry to come together to share learnings from first generation XR APIs and to collaborate to create a new generation XR API with cutting edge capabilities and a flexible, extensible, future proof architecture. The big news today is that OpenXR is now being deployed by major device manufacturers around the world. The OpenXR 1.0 specification was publicly released in the summer of 2019. And since then, Kronos has been working hard to release the OpenXR conformance tests to enable devices to be tested to be compliant to the OpenXR specification. Kronos made a major announcement yesterday that the first officially conformant devices are now shipping. This includes all Windows Mixed Reality headsets and the HoloLens 2 from Microsoft, plus the Oculus Rift and the Oculus Quest. Yesterday, Oculus announced that developers can now submit their OpenXR apps to the Oculus Store. There are also a significant number of runtimes and devices that will soon be conformant including Steam VR from Valve, the Vario High Resolution VR headset, and the Monado open source OpenXR implementation from Calabra. Valve in particular have stated that all new functionality for the Steam VR runtime will be exposed in OpenXR rather than in their older proprietary OpenVR API. With version 4.2.5, the Unreal Engine from Epic has enhanced its support for OpenXR including optimizing reprojection and rendering. And lastly, 
Working group members, including sensor vendors such as Ultraleap and Toby, have developed hand and eye tracking OpenXR extensions that are already shipping on Microsoft's HoloLens 2. So let's look at some of these announcements in a little more detail. Kronos released the full OpenXR conformance test suite into open source earlier in July. Kronos welcomes anyone implementing the OpenXR API to use the conformance tests at no cost to aid in their development. Kronos also released the formal OpenXR adopters program this month. This program enables OpenXR implementers to submit their conformance testing results for working group review. And if their implementation is conformant, they are enabled to use the OpenXR logo and trademark and enjoy the protection of the Kronos IP framework where no Kronos member will assert their patents against the use of OpenXR technology. The OpenXR adopter program ensures consistent implementation quality and application portability across multiple OpenXR implementations as they roll out across the industry. One of the interesting things about this first wave of conformant OpenXR devices is that it includes several different form factors, including PC tethered and standalone devices, both AR and VR devices, and runtimes over both Windows and Android, demonstrating that the OpenXR architecture is fully capable of supporting a wide variety of devices and platforms. In parallel with the first OpenXR implementations being shipped, OpenXR working group members have defined cross-vendor hand and eye tracking extensions for building advanced user interfaces. The hand tracking extension defines a hand articulation model that will be consistently exposed by OpenXR implementations, enabling applications to use sophisticated hand interactions that will be portable across vendors. The hand tracking extension is already shipping on the HoloLens 2, and Ultraleap also has a developer preview. The eye tracking extension has been developed by sensor vendors, including Toby, and will enable natural eye gaze interactions. And this extension is also already being shipped on HoloLens 2. Now let's look at some of the applications that are beginning to use OpenXR. In one of the first major gaming ports to OpenXR, Microsoft announced yesterday that the new Render Dragon rendering engine for Minecraft will use OpenXR to provide VR support in Minecraft across all OpenXR devices. The open source developer community is also actively using OpenXR. Microsoft has released samples into open source to illustrate how to use OpenXR on HoloLens 2. Blender, the popular open source 3D authoring tool now uses OpenXR to enable 3D artists to use virtual reality to go inside and inspect their scenes. Also, the WebXR engine in Chromium, used to bring XR capabilities to the Chrome and Edge browsers, now uses OpenXR as its default backend to access XR devices. So what functionality does OpenXR provide? OpenXR contains everything an application needs to drive XR devices in a system, including device discovery, event processing, sensor tracking, and pose calculations on the input side, and frame display timing and composition plus haptics control on the output side. However, OpenXR deliberately doesn't include 3D rendering functionality, and so an OpenXR application will also use a rendering API, such as Vulkan, to generate imagery. OpenXR can be used with any 3D API, but a new generation API such as Vulkan from Kronos is particularly well suited to create applications with high rendering performance and low latency that are vital for a compelling XR experience. Vulkan and OpenXR are both native APIs. However, the metaverse of openly connected and searchable virtual spaces and interstitial experiences is likely to evolve out of the World Wide Web. And so it is critical that the industry bring accelerated XR capability to the browser. The World Wide Web Consortium, the W3C, is developing the WebXR standard to bring XR capabilities to the web stack. The good news is that Kronos is working closely with the WebXR working group to enable WebXR to effectively use OpenXR as a native portability API, saving WebXR 
from having to be ported to dozens of proprietary runtime APIs and enabling XR in the web to be widely available on all OpenXR compliant devices. And now this is perhaps the most important slide for this audience. As well as providing application portability between different HMD devices, OpenXR can provide portability as AR is deployed on new architectures, such as CloudXR platforms. CloudXR can use 5G to enable a lightweight AR device to send its real-time sensor data to an edge server that processes that sensor data and uses powerful GPUs to generate graphical augmentations that are far more sophisticated than can be generated on a battery power device and then are sent back to the device for the display. An OpenXR runtime can be implemented to run across both the AR device and the edge server, with the OpenXR API completely hiding the round trips over 5G from the application. This enables the same AR application to run natively on an AR device or an AR device connected to an edge server. In this way, OpenXR can enable and accelerate the widespread deployment of CloudXR systems and applications. So that was a very quick introduction to Kronos and OpenXR. OpenXR is gaining wide industry adoption because it's a win-win for all involved. Software developers can write an application once and deploy on multiple hardware platforms without reporting, saving time and money and reaching a much larger market. XR hardware vendors win when they expose the OpenXR APIs on their platform through accessing a large library of OpenXR compatible applications. And most importantly, end users win as they will know that the XR applications they want to run will be compatible with the system that they have purchased, growing customer confidence and growing the XR market for everyone. So that's the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening. As you may know, Kronos and GTI are establishing a liaison relationship so that the two organizations can work together to enable and promote the use of 5G and OpenXR to build cloud XR systems around the world to the benefit of all in the industry. We look forward to working together. Thank you.